I can remember when I was in y'all's position in life and looking on the downhill side, looking up, and I look at y'all and I see me many, many years ago, and I think, wow, where is time gone? I've been with United Airlines for 53 years. I'm 76 years old. I'm gonna retire this August. And so you're thinking, well, hmm, that old man, I gotta to listen to him. Well, I'm not an overly educated person. I don't have a master's degree or a bachelor's degree. Some of y'all will eventually go on and get your bachelor's and your master's. And so you're probably thinking, well, why am I have to sit here and listen to this old man? He probably don't know nothing about life anyway. But I have been around 76 years and I have been with United for 53 years. The only diploma that you can say I have in life is my A&P tickets, and I got that from the federal government so I could work on airplanes. I do have a lot of responsibility in life, just like Mr. Joe. If any of you ever go out to the airport and get on a United airplane and fly off. But anyhow, I'm responsible for that airplane once I work on it and for the people who fly on it. If something happens and that plane crashes, somebody dies, they're gonna come and they can prove that it's my fault. They're gonna to come to me and they're gonna charge me with manslaughter and they're gonna put me in Leavenworth for the rest of my life. So I do have a little bit of responsibility and I do know a little bit about life. There are six things that I would like to talk to you today about life. And they're very important things. And if you will learn them and listen to them, it will help you all to all get through life. Now, at the end of this, there will be a test. Now, but there are six lessons in life that are very important. The first lesson is so important that I want it to be the epitaph on my headstone when I die. Because if my grandkids come to me and put flowers on my grave. I want to speak to them from the grave about this lesson. This lesson in life is that nothing in life is free. Now, y'all were just playing a song that's very important to this country. How many of you here are from Texas, are real true Texans? Raise your hands. All right, very good. Now, the rest of you that aren't Texans, you came here from somewhere, New York, California, Florida, Mississippi, Missouri, Oklahoma, Wyoming, Montana. But we all have one thing in common. And that one thing is that we are in a, the country of the, that is the greatest country in the world. We have a freedom, freedom of religion, freedom to pick our schools, pick our careers, go where we want to, when we want to, and do what we want to. This freedom did not come free. This freedom was paid for at a very high price. It was bought with the blood of our forefathers, your great grandfathers, your grandfathers, your fathers, your mothers, your sisters, your brothers have all paid, your uncles, your aunts, everybody that's been in the military has paid for that price. In my day, there was a thing called the draft. Y'all probably don't even know what the draft is. But in my day, every able-bodied male between the age of 18 and 27, sooner or later, had to go into the military. It was part of paying your debt and your dues to society. Well, when I was 14 years old, I realized that I knew what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a mechanic, and I wanted to be an aircraft mechanic. So at 14, I started working on finding out what all I had to do and what I had to get it, to be able to do that whenever I got there. Because when I turned 18, I was just like y'all. I was very cocky. I was gonna reach out and get a big piece of this world and I was gonna hang on for all it was worth. And that's exactly what I did. I graduated from high school in May of 1964. I was 17 years old. I was ready to go then, but my grandparents wouldn't sign for me. Because I was at 18, you had to have, and I was still a minor, you had to have an adult sign for you. At that time, Vietnam was starting to crank up. And my grandparents didn't want me to go because they was afraid I'd get killed. But I was ready to go. I wanted a piece of this world. I wanted to pay my dues and my debts to society. So I told them, no problem. My birthday's in August. I'll wait till then. The night of my birthday, 
I woke up at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. I was on my way. I had a piece of this world and I was hanging on. At the age of 18, I also got married. So I got a big chunk of this world. Started my career, started my family, and I was ready to go. By the time I was 22, I'd already completed my commitment to my country. I was a Vietnam vet, and I was on my way. I was working for an airline company. Well, when I turned 26, my wife came to me one day and she said, I want a divorce. And I'm thinking, wow. I was going from the top of the world to the bottom of the world. I was lower than whale poop. So everything has a price. There's more to this story, and I'll get to it a little bit later. Nothing in life is free. Not even a pain in a rear. Even a pain in a rear costs you. Everything has a price. So remember that. Most important lesson. Nothing in life is free. The second thing I want to talk about, the second lesson, is a man slash woman is only as good as your word. If your word is no good, then most likely you won't be neither. And the thing about it is, is when you tell somebody you're going to do something, do it. Because if you don't, and you tell people enough that you're going to do something and you don't do it, sooner or later they will lose faith in you. And when they lose faith in you, eventually you will lose faith in yourself. And when you lose faith in yourself, then you're a lost soul. And a lost soul is in a world of hurt in this world today. So remember, you're only as good as your word. A man slash woman is only as good as their word. If their word is no good, most likely they are neither. That's number two. Number three. And this, some of you adults will probably disagree with me, but the most important thing in your life is your job, your career. You're going to say, well, I don't agree with that, but it is. So let me tell you the rest of the story. When I was 26, I told you my wife asked me for a divorce. She was tired of being married to an old greasy, grimy mechanic. She wanted to marry an old boy that was going to be a doctor, make more money, give her more things in life. So again, I felt lower than whale poop. But I was lucky. I had some good friends, and they sent me to a, a lawyer. That lawyer's name was Bill Alexander. He was the prosecuting district district attorney for the city of Dallas. For 12 years, he had prosecuted criminals and had cases. And so you adults will probably ask, well, why did you have a criminal lawyer when you could have got a civil lawyer that would have been a lot cheaper? Well, because he was a prosecuting attorney and a criminal lawyer, he understood people. He knew people. So when he and I talked, he understood where I was coming from and where I was going, and he wanted to help me. So he told me, he says, Lou, I'll take your case on one condition. That condition is, is that one day of the week, you have to come down and walk me to the courthouse. I said, okay, I can do that. Well, back in those days, working for the airline, no matter what kind of experience you had or what kind of license you had, you still had to start at the bottom. So when you started at the bottom, you was always on a graveyard shift. You had prime days off, like Mondays and Tuesdays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays or Wednesdays and Thursdays. So every Monday morning when I got off work, I'd walk down to, or drive down downtown Dallas, get with Bill, and we'd walk to the courthouse. Well, one morning as we were walking to the court, I told him, Bill, you know, when this is all over with, I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to go somewhere else and start all over again. Bill looked at me and he says, no, Lou, you don't want to do that. He says, right now you have a career, you have a future, and you have an honest living. You have something that you can be proud of. You can take care of yourself. But if you quit this job and you go somewhere else, you're not even going to be able to take care of yourself. And if you can't take care of yourself, how can you take care of your family? And Bill was right. That was your job is your most important thing in life. If you can't take care of yourself, how do you expect to be able to take care of your family and give them the things that they need when they need it? Now, stop and think about your parents, your mother, your dad. If they didn't go to work every day and do their job, 
where would y'all be today? Would y'all be able to come here and enjoy this country and enjoy the things that you do? No. So your job, your job is the most important thing in life that you can ever do. Now, I will retire this August and I will have spent 53 years with this company. When you pick your job and your career, pick something that you like to do. Because once you start it, it's a long ways to retirement. Pretty soon, y'all will be graduating and you will be on top of the world. Well, once you get on top of the world, it's a great and wonderful feeling. But once that graduation day is over, now you've got to go to work. And it's a long ways from where you graduate to where you retire. So pick something that you like. Now, the 53 years that I've put with this company does not seem like it has been that long. It seems like I just started yesterday. They went that fast, and they will go fast for you. They went fast because I love my job. I love what I do. And if you love what you do, then it's not a drudgery. You, you look forward to going to it because not only are you helping you, but you're helping your family and you're doing something in life worthwhile. So do what you want to do. The average person, by the time they get up in the morning, get ready for work, go to work, work their day, come home from work and unwind, they have spent two thirds of their life dedicated to their job. So if you don't like what you're doing and you don't like your job, then you have wasted two thirds of your life. So do you, you don't wanna waste your life because life is very precious, very important. You wanna make every shot count. So pick something that you like to do and do it to the best of your ability. So that when you get to the end of it, you can stand back in your life and look at it, stand tall, stand proud, and hold your head up high and be proud for what you've accomplished. And every one of us have a purpose here in life. No matter how small you may think it is, we're here for a reason. We have a mission. God has given us that mission. And until that mission is done, we can jump off buildings. We can break every bone in our body. But until our purpose here in life, however big or however small it is done, we will live until our mission is done. So remember that no matter what it is, whatever you want to do, what makes you feel good, make that your profession and do it and stick with it and make it the most important thing in your life because without it, you can't even take care of yourself or your family. Those are three things. Number four, don't let people wear you down. There will be people who will try just like me when I went through my divorce. I was so down that I was willing to give up my career, my profession, because people had wore me down. But after what Bill told me, I picked myself back up and I would not let people wear me down again. And believe you me, 53 years, boom, went fast and here I am. So do not let people wear you down. Pick what you want to do, an honest living, a good living, what makes you feel good and what you're proud about, and do it. Do not let them wear you down. My grandparents, they went through the, through the Depression and the Recession and World War II. A lot of y'all know a little bit about World War II, but I doubt any of you know anything about the Great Depression. The Great Depression was a bad time in the world for everybody. There was a lot of people that didn't make it through. And the ones that did worked hard and they struggled and they stuck with it and they stayed with it. That was my grandparents. They taught me a very important lesson. And that lesson is you do not judge people by the mistakes they make. You judge them by what they do about them after they make them. We will all make mistakes. Y'all have already made mistakes in life. A smart person learns from his mistakes. And a smart person learns to get over it. Does not let them destroy you and wear you down. You learn, you pick up, you move on, and you become wiser. You need to remember, there was only one perfect person in this world. We hung him on the cross. 
And when he comes back and he sees the mess that we have made of this world, he's going to be an unhappy camper. So do not fear your mistakes. Learn from your mistakes. People who are not doing anything will never make a mistake, but people who do stuff will always make mistakes. Learn from your mistake. So don't judge them by the mistakes. You judge people by what they do about them afterwards. Now, my grandfather would always say after that, now, if the old boy or the old person keeps making the same mistake over and over, they're not playing with a loaded deck. Get away from them because their elevator don't go all the way to the top. Their biscuits are not done. They're one brick shy of a full load. So get away from them before they hurt you. So that's that lesson. The final lesson, number six, is respect. Respect is the most, another very important thing in life. And the respect starts with you yourself. You must respect yourself. If you don't respect yourself, how can you expect somebody else to respect you? And the thing about it is, we all have to respect each other. We're in this free country, in this free land. And if you want yourself and your rights to be respected, you must respect the other person's right and his feelings and his thoughts as well. Respect is something that cannot be given. Respect is something that has to be earned. And once you earn it, you will work hard to earn it and you do not want to give up. To earn it, you have to respect other people's rights. Their right for religion, their right for politics, their right to go where they want to go. Be what they want to be when they want to be. If you don't respect them, how can you expect them to respect you? Now, there are three doors in life. The one that you come through when you're born and you start this world. The second one is when you turn 18 and you leave the home and comfort of your parents and their love. and You go out into the world. That's the second door. The third door is the door that you will go through when you die. I'm standing in front of that third door. Y'all are approaching the second door. It's a long ways to the third. Now, I told you that there would be a test. The test will start when you go through that second door. And it will not end. It will go with you all your life till you go through the third door. And just before you go through the third door, you will turn and you will look back at your life. And there you will finish that test and you will grade yourself. Nobody but you can grade yourself and know whether or not you pass that test. If you will live by these six things, it will make your life much better. And when the day comes that you stand and look back, you'll look and you'll say, well, I passed. Or well, I didn't do such a good job. I should have done better. And if you say that, just remember, you've learned from your mistakes and we all make them. And with that, I will end it and let y'all get on because I know you're tired of listening to this old man. Y'all have a good day. Good luck in your futures. Thank you.